Okay, so on this short video we will be uh, fixing some bent CPU socket pins. So one of my Rampage Extreme motherboards has a bent CPU socket pin on this part of the CPU socket. So uh, the fifth pin, uh, when calculated from left on the first row, is bent down a little bit. So something has pushed that particular uh, pin down a little bit, so it doesn't make adequate contact with the installed uh, CPU. So we have to pull it up and uh, for this kind of purpose I generally use some uh, very fine tip tweezers. So these particular uh, tweezers are I think like 0.2 uh, millimeters wide and they are anti-static. So uh, these didn't really cost that much so I recommend you get uh, something like these uh, if you ever have to bend like CPU socket pins. And uh, you can check your work by using some uh, like 10x magnification loop. So uh, I'll try to show you using the loop, but it's not very easy due to, due to bad light once I put the loop in front of the camera. But let's try to show you. So, uh, so if you look carefully at the center of the screen right now, the fifth pin on the bottom row, when calculated from left, is bent a little bit. I'm sure you can see that just fine. So that's the pin I, I will be trying to bend with the tweezers. But I think it will be safest for me to do that off camera, because it's very tight spot and it's very hard to set up the camera. But you only need to pull the pin up a little bit with the tweezers. That's pretty much it. So. Uh, I can try to set up the camera, but it's not a very easy, easy thing to do on camera, but I'm sure you get the idea anyways. And okay, some more problems. So uh, the reason why that pin has been uh, or has been bent down seems to be that something has uh, damaged it. So now it actually went to two pieces. So the top part of the pin uh, cut off. So now only the like the bottom or the root part of the pin is still attached in the hole. So now it looks like there's like an empty hole uh, in that row of pins. And uh, I tried to find the data sheet online, the pinout I mean, or the pin uh, diagram, and it seems that this particular pin is some uh, VCC motherboard regulation pin. So it doesn't seem to be like a crown pin. So uh, I think it's required in order to uh, have a functioning motherboard. So now the only uh, thing I can do in order to repair this whole thing is to replace the pin the same way De Bauer did in his video. So I already tried that method on some very disposable uh, DDR2775 uh, motherboard. So I will use some spare pin from that particular board and I will just try to replace that one. I already tried to remove a pin and then reinstall it back and it went just fine. So uh, it didn't seem too hard, but of course I have to do it carefully. It's actually quite hard to remove the bottom part of that pin because it's cut, but uh, I, I could already see it uh, with this board before. So this particular pin has given me issues for a very long time already. So it has looked like it's going to break into two pieces very, very soon. So I'm, I've been kind of expecting this outcome, but anyways, so let's try to uh, remove this pin now using a uh, hot air soldering station and then just uh, add some solder to the spare pin and, it re and install that pin into that particular uh, hole. So I use some uh, pressurized air from my uh, uh, air compressor and I blew all of the residues off from that area. So now the top part of the, the, top part of the pin has disappeared somewhere. So I couldn't find it anymore. So yeah, not my best day, but have to remember that this motherboard is already uh, almost 13 years old. So if you uh, mount CPUs dozens or even hundreds or thousands of times, you use a lot of pressure from, I mean, with your cooling solutions like water blocks, LN2 pots, it's obviously going to stress the pins after a while or at some point at least. So yeah, so let's see what happens. Okay, so now the uh, pin has been pulled off from the socket. So I recommend you grab 
the particular pin first before applying any hot air. So I used the tweezers to grab that particular pin, then I just brought the uh, hot air uh, soldering uh, gun with my left hand and uh, I didn't heat the pin spot too long and it was very easy to grab the pin off from the socket. So I used uh, quite medium like uh, airflow and 330 degrees uh, Celsius on the hot air part of the soldering station. So now I will just take a replacement pin from that disposable board and then I will just plug that particular pin in the same hole and I will use the hot air soldering station to push the replacement pin into that same hole and it should melt quite nicely. I might use some flux and I will add some a little bit of solder on the bottom part of that pin just to make the reflowing easier so that I can attach the pin in the socket. So if this goes well, if this motherboard turns on fine, I will try to show you the exact process with that disposable board because I really want to get I really want to get this uh, done right. I really want to keep this motherboard. So this is not by any means a disposable motherboard to me. So it's the same. So yeah, so I'll try to keep going. Okay, so I actually uh, removed quite a few of the pins from uh, the CPU socket of the other motherboard, but, I'm not, but now I actually managed to uh, solder a pin in that same hole. It's turned a little bit, so the uh, line isn't perfect, but I think it should hit the bottom of the CPU surface and make contact with the corresponding uh, uh, golden contact pad on the bottom side of the CPU. So now I'll try to use the same 10x loop uh, magnification to show you the spot in more closer view if possible. So as you can see, so 4, 5, it's turned like a little bit, so it's not uh, perfectly in same uh, like orientation with the, with the other pins, but I think it should uh, touch the pad just fine. So I need to do like a test clamp and see if it bends like properly with, with the other pins. So we'll see. Okay, so I just finished the whole process on the Rambase Extreme, so I'll try to show you the exactly the same method on this uh, disposable uh, Asus DDR2 775 buffer board. So uh, after removing the broken pin from the Rampage Extreme, we have to remove the replacement pin we wish to use on the board we want to repair. So first I will uh, just locate the pin I wish to remove, which I will be using on the board I will be trying to repair, obviously. So uh, the way I do this is I grab my tweezers and then I grab and hold the pin I wish to remove, like for example one of these over here. And then I will just bring in the hot air, from the hot air soldering station I mean, and I will just bring it with my left hand and I will uh, put some uh, heat towards the spot where the pin is for a few seconds and then it should come off quite easily. So uh, that's pretty much how you do it. So uh, now I will just turn on the uh, hot air soldering station. I set it to 340 degrees with relatively mild airflow. So now I will just gra grab the pin I wish to remove. Like for example, doesn't, it doesn't really matter for this purpose. So like for example, that one over there. I will just bring in the hot air, like this. 340 degrees Celsius, as I said. I wiggle the pin a little bit with the tweezers with my right hand. Some of these pins don't really come off easily, so it's a bit weird wiggle a little bit and now it come off then I just put the hot air soldering station gun in its spot and here is the pin itself it's a little bit hard to see but that's how it looks like pretty much so it's actually quite long the 
the part of the pin that goes inside the uh, socket is actually quite long. So now I will just turn off the uh, hot air part of the uh, soldering station and I will turn on the actual uh, soldering iron as I will be putting I will be putting some solder on uh, the bottom side of the pin which, which will go inside uh, which will go inside the CPU socket. So now I'll just take my uh, soldering iron, apply some solder to it, like so. Hmm. And then just apply solder on the bottom side. Don't need to put too much. But I'm sure you get the basic idea what I'm doing. So that's pretty much how it looks like now. So that's so the pin is ready to go inside the board. So now I will turn off the uh, soldering iron once again and I will turn on I will turn the camera towards the socket once again. That's the best like spot where I can get you guys to. And now I will uh, already turn on the uh, hot air once again. And now it's very important to get the pin the correct way around in your tweezers so that you can actually push the pin inside like one of the holes. So now I'll just try to push the pin inside like somewhat so push the pin inside so that yeah this one is going in much easier so now it's already like half the way in we will grab it with the tweezers and apply some heat and push the pin in like so and now apply some heat so that it gets like soldered in like so yes the plastic around the pins starts to melt once you apply a lot of heat it's normal and Now we just align it a little bit better with yeah, sadly the neighboring pins have bent too but now it's pretty much in place. Yeah now it's now it's pretty much in place. So this is how I actually did it with the RAM base extreme. So uh, you might get some benefit if you apply some flux in uh, the socket but you need to uh, just make sure you align it properly with the tweezers. I'm pretty sure you got the idea what I did with uh, this whole, uh, I mean, in this whole uh, process. So now let's see if the board works and uh, make a conclusion for this video. Yeah, and now the moment of truth. I just installed the Rambage Extreme on top of this Dimastec bench table, one stick of power chip based DDR3 memory. Galax 710 GT and a Kingpin Cooling F1 Dark CPU port on the CPU as a simple heatsink. So I just cleared CMOS and let's press the start button. Now check the lights if they come. Boom! Looks like a proper, like a normal post process. So we should have the BOSS screen coming up. Yep. Republic of Games. So funny, this is actually the first time I ever repaired a damaged CPU socket like this. So F1, check main, system information, Rampage Extreme 1301 bars, E6600 CPU, and hardware voltage, V core. 3.3 vibe 5 volts 12 volts all normal and temperature yeah they look all right 
So let's turn off the whole thing. So yeah, so every day you definitely learn something new. So uh, it, it, it didn't go as I planned. So I was originally just going to bend back a bent CPU socket pin, but apparently it got broken. So it got broken into two pieces. I removed the top part, the broken part from uh, the CPU socket. I removed the broken pin. I took a replacement pin from the disposable board over there on the other table and I just installed that replacement pin into the empty hole on the Rampage Extreme and now it works. So yeah, so damn happy if it just works and if it works well even on LN2. So I'm not like fully sure was the pin out or the pin diagram that I found online absolutely correct, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it is because I tried to measure that same uh, pin on the other board with a multimeter and it's not. It definitely didn't seem to be like a crown pin, so uh, it might have like a special purpose. So I'm pretty sure the board wouldn't have worked if there wasn't a pin in that empty hole, so to say. So yeah, so uh, if you like to see this video, then give me a thumbs up. I I can link that particular uh, soldering station I've been using for my simple uh, soldering jobs. It's not that expensive, it's quite cheap on eBay, so uh, you can happily grab that one if you need a simple uh, like two-in-one soldering station. So both the iron and the hot air. But yeah, so damn happy with the outcome as long as it lasts and yeah, the Rampage Extreme Team Finland Edition is still alive. So thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.